Do guided modes break the speed of light? Many years ago, I was in a business meeting, and this is actually before I really had studied electromagnetics in any kind of depth. I had the, the typical electrical engineering, a little bit of background in it, but had not studied it in depth. We were sitting around before this meeting, and somebody just matter-of-factly mentioned that the modes in a metal waveguide travel faster than the speed of light. Not knowing any different or how to think about that, I just sort of filed that away in my brain as unusual. So years later, when I was studying electromagnetics, well, it's, at some point we came across metal waveguides and we're analyzing these. And I learned we identify discrete modes in these metal waveguides with integers M and N. So you'll have these TEMN modes or TMMN modes. And we eventually derived an equation for the velocity of those modes. So looking at this equation, if we look at these terms around the square brackets, these are all positive numbers. So this whole group of terms that I'm circling right here is a positive number. So we're taking a positive number and subtracting that from one. So what's inside the square root then, if it's a valid guided mode, is something less than one. Well, if we take the speed of light and divide that by a number less than one, in fact, we get the velocity of all the modes in a metal waveguide always traveling faster than the speed of light. Now, built into this equation is an assumption that we have an air-filled waveguide here. So, well, this seemed unusual, but there it was. We derived it, and the velocity of these modes are actually faster than the speed of light. Or is it? So I want to talk you through what's really going on here. And I'm going to start by saying, since this is an air-filled waveguide, we have air or vacuum everywhere. And I'm going to be drawing plane waves like we have here. Every single wave here is traveling exactly at the speed of light because we have air everywhere. So keep that in mind. One thing we can do with a waveguide is sort of ray trace what's going on. You can imagine, you know, launching a wave into the left section of this waveguide and it bounces around because it's a metal waveguide and the edges act like a mirror. And that's the waveguide. That literally is what happens. Well, we can look at the field associated with the ray going upward. And we have this wave going upward. And this is traveling upward or at this diagonal direction at exactly the speed of light. There's also the downward wave. And so it is traveling downward in this lower right direction at the speed of light. Well, in this waveguide, we actually have both of these happening at the same time. So when these overlap, in fact, we get an interference pattern. And this interference pattern is actually what's traveling faster than the speed of light. It's not those individual waves, it's the interference pattern. And in fact, the more upward and downward these waves are, in other words, the more this is bouncing vertically, the faster that interference pattern will be traveling through the waveguide. So let's think about this. The individual waves themselves are not traveling faster than the speed of light. In fact, if they're bouncing around up and down, they're, in fact, left to right anyway, traveling slower than the speed of light. Yet this interference pattern is traveling faster than the speed of light. And so in my head, I was confused and trying to reconcile this. But in the end, the velocity that we calculated was something called the phase velocity. Phase velocity is sort of a mathematically abstract thing. This interference pattern is just sort of the cross sections of two waves passing by each other. And that easily can exceed the speed of light. What is really of concern here is the group velocity or how fast information could travel or just how fast actual stuff is propagating down the waveguide. Well, and in fact, the steeper that angle is, the slower those waves are actually traveling through the waveguide. It's just that their interference pattern is traveling faster than the speed of light. But you can't 
it's a mathematical thing. You can't send information down that. It's not sending energy quicker than the speed of light. It's just an interference pattern that appears to be going faster than the speed of light. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EM Possible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.